All right, hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be talking about the uh, very, very impossibly easy beginners of embroidery. This is another one of our creative adults and teens cr uh, crafting programs. So yeah, let's get started. Um, so for today, we're just gonna be learning about three or four stitches. They're all pretty easy. Um, and to join us, you can use uh, a few standard materials, so your embroidery hoop. Uh, if you don't have an embroidery hoop at home, you probably may possibly be able to improvise. So what I have done with this is it's a pot, it's weighted down with what was in it. Uh, there's lots of pins in here. So there are ways to improvise if you don't have the correct materials. And in this case, um, you're able to stitch as best as you can without the actual hoop. So don't be afraid to join in if you need to improvise. Uh, the other item that you will need is an embroidery needle. So if you only have a set of needles like this at home, that's fine. If you have one of those um, spinny twisty ones, that's fine as well. If you actually have a proper embroidery needle, uh, one of mine that I have today is, it's a gold plated one. You can see it there and that's just, it's got a wide eye to it and that's kind of what you want, um, a wider eye. So for example, with these guys I have here, anything with the wider eye that you can see is good for working with embroidery floss. And speaking of that, you also want to use embroidery floss today, but again, if you don't have some of these materials at home, it's okay. You can use um, sewing thread. And what you want to do is just, you want to double up. This is going to mean that your stitches are quite thin, but again, in a pinch, if you don't have supplies and you still want to participate with us today, you can use these. Uh, so optional items you can use today are, this is a washout as well as an air erasable double-ended pen. These are good for if you want to draw uh, straight lines or anything like that on your fabric. Uh, going again in a pinch, I have used a pencil, I have used Crayola. Crayola is washout, it works very well. And just a quick reminder, um, if you do have any comments, I can see the feed, so let me know if you have any questions about anything. So, today what we will be doing is creating the start of a um, stitch piece. So, we're going to be covering the running stitch, back stitch, a little bit of feather stitch, and satin stitch, and if we have time, we'll cover French knots, and another one that's not on this one, but it is hidden under here. This is a woven circle, and when you do them correctly, they look like a little rose. And the goal is to finish off a piece or give you this the skills to finish off a piece so you can create something like this. So this one has back stitch, it has the feather stitch, uh, it has a French knot, it has the rose, and I'm hoping to do another tutorial on embroidery so we can cover the leaves that I've done up here um, if we don't get that done. The really nice thing about embroidery is that as long as you have the ability to do back stitch, um, this is a patch that I have created just using backstitch and satin stitch. So backstitch is the thin stuff on the side. Uh, satin stitch is when you have the stitch all going in the same direction. And so mine are all on the diagonal slant and it's just a fill in the blank essentially. So there's one I've done. There's another. Please keep in mind I'm still learning. So they're not perfect but I do enjoy embroidering patches. So this one has the satin stitch here with a back stitch around the jeans. This one has just satin stitch on it and then a blanket stitch around the outside. So this is the satin stitch where it's all in one direction. 
And as long as you're able to draw a pattern on something, you can kind of get as creative as you want. So again, these are just backstitch and satin stitch. So the fill in the blank and the outline. So what I would like you to do to get started is grab your hoop, grab whatever fabric you're going to be using today. Um, I'm just using some really basic cotton. Um, it's very thin, it's not the greatest, but it's really great to practice on. Um, and as you can see, it's quite see-through as it's quite thin, so I can see my fingers through it. It's not something that you'd want to do anything really fancy on, but it's, as I said, great to practice on. So today we're going to start with something called the running stitch, so going back to my stitch sampler. The running stitch is the top one right here, and it's just very simple where you want to make a stitch and then leave an equal amount of space in between the stitch and have the stitch itself be the same length as the space. So it's stitch, gap, stitch, gap, stitch, gap, stitch, gap. So to get started, I will work usually from the bottom up, but I know I tend to move my hoop around. So I usually adjust my hoop to whatever way is most comfortable for me. Um, and please keep in mind, I am left-handed and um, I can attempt to do some stitches from my right hand, but they usually don't go as well because my manual dexterity is not that great in this hand. So I'll start here for now. So what you want to do is I have about three strands of my embroidery floss. So I've taken my one thick piece here and I've divided it up into two sets of three strands. And I've done that with my green one. So I'm working with three strands. I like having something a little bit chunkier to start with for embroidery, depending on what you're doing. Um, you can go from as many as all of them down to just one or two. So, and what I've done is I've knotted the bottom. So here's a nice little knot. And you just have that so it's nice and stable. And then you take all three of your threads and remember how I said I, you need a nice big wide or a nice big long eye for your needle because if you don't have the wider eye you may not be able to get all three of your strands through it. Oops. And of course because I'm on camera this time it's going to be impossible for me to thread this. If you do have a needle threader at home, you can use that. Okay, I have jinxed myself. One moment. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just leaving my tail there. And that's fine. So to start with the running stitch, as I said, I like to go from the bottom, and I have switched back to my left hand, pardon me, and you just want to, from the back of your uh, fabric, you just pull it through. I forgot a step. Um, what you can do with your marker, or if you just want to use pencil, you just want to draw a straight line. And again, as this is going to be a stitch sampler, it's going to be practice. If it's a line with a pen that is permanent and doesn't wash out, that's fine. So again, you want to start from the back, pull forward. Um, if you are not comfortable doing um, multiple stitches at once or a whole stitch at once, that's okay. I'll show you the two different ways to complete this stitch. So if you want to just go back and forth with one movement, and remember you want to keep the stitch and the gap in between them about the same. It's kind of like walking on a tightrope except with embroidery. You can do it in two separate motions 
where you pull your needle through from the back and then you pull your needle through and the thread through from the front. If you want to try making the stitch all in one motion and then setting up for the next stitch, one way to keep doing this stitch is you put your needle in and then you want to push it up through the fabric so it's going in and out and pull through. Now depending on your fabric and how thick it is and how stiff it is this may be harder for you to do and depending on the size of the needle and how many strands you're using as well. So experiment a little bit with what's comfiest for you. And then we're just going to keep going all the way up the line for your running stitch. I'm trying to keep my stitches as straight and as even as possible. I think they've gotten a little bit longer and are continuing to get progressively longer. If you're using a wooden hoop, you may notice that every so often you do have to pull your thread, or your, not your thread, your fabric a little bit tight again. Just because it doesn't stay as much as it could. Okay. Oops, that one was not very even. But that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to do my last one here. And there we are. So this is the running stitch. So I did start out a little bit smaller and then when I switched over to doing a full stitch, my stitches progressively got longer. So it is something that even I still need to practice. Um, so that's always one thing to note. So I'm just going to leave this here. And then if you remember how I said if you're in a pinch and you want to be able to use your sewing thread, I do have two pieces of sewing thread on this needle here. So. We're going to jump into our next stitch. So if you find that if I'm going a little bit too fast, even if the video is, or even for the live stream, you are able to pause and then go back. So if you need to practice a little bit more with the back stitch, you're more than welcome to. Okay, or the running stitch. So back stitch, if you look at my sampler over here, it's all one solid stitch. So, or, um, it's one continuous line and it's got the little stitches that make up that continuous line and then if you flip it over you can see that it's actually a double thickness on the back and that's because you are going back over stitches so to start the back stitch you don't want to start at the beginning of your line that you've drawn you want to start a little ways up because we're going back from where we start. So you pull your thread through. And then we go back to the beginning. Now I'm going to show you the way to do this in two separate movements first. So you pull through here. So you've gone back. And then when you go to stick your needle in again from the back, you go up again. So just like with the running stitch, you want to keep the stitches about as even as you can. So it looks like a nice line. Now, the most important part is that you want to make sure that your line is continuous. So when you put your needle through, 
you want it to be in the same teeny tiny hole. So this is a little bit hard to see, but it's the same hole in my fabric where I put my needle through. Oops. Got ahead of myself. I goofed. Pardon me. So when I go in, and then I go back in here, that's where you want to have the same hole. So you want to make sure that they're the stitches are almost connected. So that's doing the back stitch with two separate movements where you're pulling again the thread or the floss, however you want to refer to it, um, in from the back and then pushing it back down into the back from the front. If you want to do one continuous movement, just like with the running stitch, what you do is you insert your needle into that hole from the last stitch and then oops push it through the same distance away so again trying to keep your stitches all about the same length and then you just pull it through you pull through, pull through, pull through, keep going and then you've set up for your next stitch. If you can't manage to get it all done in one movement at one go, don't worry about it. Like many things, practice makes perfect and there's even some days where I don't want to bother with trying to do it all in one movement as well and it's just easier to do it the double way. Here's a slight hitch of using the two strands. One is not behaving very kindly. Okay, so we just keep going up that line. Now, if you are planning on using all your stitches on the same um, piece of fabric, like I did for my other stitch sampler, the one over here. Oops. Just make sure you give yourself enough room between the different stitches that I have, um, or that you have, and that way you'll be able to label them however you want. If you want to use a couple pieces of fabric and just practice, 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 I highly encourage that as well. So if you want to practice doing the two movements, you can. If you want to practice doing your stitch in one movement, there's that one as well. And you may notice that I'm cheating a bit by catching my needle and pushing it up with my finger on the other side of my fabric. Um, sometimes that helps me stabilize everything so I can stay on a straight line. But just please be careful so as to not accidentally poke holes in yourself. Because unlike cross-stitching, embroidery uses a nice sharp needle. And we want to be nice and safe with that. Oops. And I have a tangle. Okay, so in the interest of time, you can pause the video right now and keep finishing off your back stitch, or if you want to switch over and um, come back to this in a moment, you can go back in the video, like I said. Um, I would like to cover how to complete satin stitch. So satin stitch, as I mentioned, was it's essentially the fill in the blank one. Um, I also really like doing satin stitch because once it's done, it's always nice and smooth if you use like the DMC brand embroidery floss. And so it's just it's nice to wiggle your finger across that. Um, so to practice satin stitch, I recommend just drawing any shapes you want. So here I have a triangle. Here I have a circle, I turn some circles into a ladybug. Um, keep in mind that with satin stitch, it does move a lot slower 
than um, your other stitches because you are filling in a, often a fairly large space. Um, so if you are able to and if you um, prefer doing it this way, you can just switch over to using multiple um, like the full six strands of your floss or you can just use three or four. So we want to get our next needle threaded. As before, you want to make sure that you have a little knot on the end. I always do a bit of a double knot where I do a loop and then I knot that. But however you find works best for you, tie your knot that way. So there we go. There's that. All right. So, when you are starting your satin stitch, first you want to decide what direction you want your thread to go in. So for example, using different directions you can kind of create different textures. So on this bat that I made, um, I had for example like the eyebrows were going kind of in a slant, the nose is going a different way, these were going different ways. So if you decide beforehand what direction you want to go in, that's always helpful I find, um, and that helps you give the texture and then when you switch colors and work in different spots you can actually see the texture change and you can see kind of there's a depth. So that actually adds like a three-dimensional element to whatever you're working on and I always think it looks quite nice. So I'm going to be making a blue ladybird or ladybug depending on how you refer to them and I know they're not usually blue but in this instance it will be blue. So to get started with your satin stitch all you really need to do is, you can go from the bottom or the top, whichever way is comfortable. Um, if you go from the top, like this, and then you can just turn your piece around because I went to the bottom, what you can do is actually, if you keep your thread on one side, you can work this in one movement, so it actually goes, oops, quite a lot quicker when you are filling in the shape that you want to fill in. I could start on the far side, on here or here. I find I personally like working from the middle of things. Oops, you can see that that didn't pull through on the other side. But here we go, again using my finger to stabilize on the back. So satin stitch, the movement of satin stitch, the movement of back stitch, the movement of um, even the running stitch, it's all quite similar. So once you start with the running stitch and get used to that, then move to the back stitch and then get used to that and then move to other stitches, they all kind of build off one of another. And just like the other stitches, you can do it in the one movement that I'm using right now. Or you can do it in two movements, whichever is more comfortable for you. So instead of going back in on the other side, you can just go in and out. So we're going in. And we're going out. One thing to keep aware of while you are doing um, satin stitch is that you don't want to pull too much where your shape is. Because if I'm pulling the stitches too tight, it will warp the fabric. And you can actually see a little bit on this guy if I hold him up nice and close. You will see how I accidentally pulled too tight on some of my stitches. And if you look, this 
beige fabric isn't sitting super flat. So that's actually interesting for me to go back and look at how I've done stuff and I say, oh, I was pulling it a little bit too tight in different spots in between my letters. Um, so that's always something to be cautious of. And that's always a good reason for why you want to have your fabric nice and um, snugly fitted into your oops, I lost my needle uh, embroidery hoop. So I'm pulling it nice and taut. Oh, there's a stray in there. Pulling it nice and taut, but also not pulling it so tight that it's going to warp the fabric. So, this is the basics of satin stitch. Another way that you can do satin stitch is if you want to create something that is even more three-dimensional or it just pops a lot more, you can do a second layer. So once you've done your first layer, for example, what you would do is you would start going the other direction. So instead of going uh, vertically on the ladybug, you would go horizontally, and that will add another layer of depth. And the benefit of this is also that it's going to fill in any more uh, blanks. So I've kind of skipped this half of the wing to show you this, but normally I would fill that in. So you won't get any, you know, white spots of fabric showing through the thread. So here you can especially see right there, you don't have any white showing through there. So if I wanted to switch back, oops, feel a tangle. If I wanted to switch back over here to do everything all in one motion. And always make sure that when you're pulling through, oops, one mistake that you might make while you're pulling through, aside from getting your thread tangled like I seem to be doing, which isn't a mistake, it's just an uh-oh, is making sure that you're not accidentally pulling through like this and getting a loop stuck around your needle. So you always want to make sure that the loop that you're working on right here, and this goes for back stitch and running stitch as well, um, that your needle's kind of going beside where you're working and not into what you're working on. There are other stitches that require that, but not here. One of my favorite things about embroidery is that you can take a marker or a picture or anything like that and you can actually transfer it to your fabric with embroidery. Um, it's a lot more freehand than cross stitches. Cross stitch you kind of need an idea of where you're going and a number of stitches. With embroidery you can just draw something and go to it which I always find is really nice. Uh, it gives you a lot of freedom and as long as you find a picture that hopefully is not copyright infringement if you borrow it, um, you can create all kinds of fun stuff. So um, I'm gonna take a break from the satin stitch and there's one more stitch that I want to show you and it's going to be the hardest one that we're doing today but it's really good if you want to create something like daisies um, lavender so a lot of the stuff that I've been showing you today can be used for floral things or you can change it to something else so what I'm going to be working on next is called a uh, pardon me one second, I have lost my extra thread. 
It is called a French knot. So, I'm going to go back a little ways, backtrack a little bit in the video. So, when I was talking about splitting your threads um, for your embroidery thread, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page for that, embroidery thread comes in six strands. And so, when you're working with cross stitch, you usually grab two. Um, or if you're me, you grab three, and for embroidery, it's usually two or three, or all six of them if you're doing something really chunky. Um, so I've separated it into two, and then how I always separate mine is I'll just pull the two apart, put my finger in between them, and just drag my finger through them as far as it'll go. Then I pause, let everything untangle, and then keep going. And that way I don't end up with a great, big, ugly knot at the end. We're almost there. Let me can... oh! Almost got that ugly knot. Okay. So I'm just going to grab my needle back from my blue. Swap over to my red. Now, the difference between oops, a French knot and other stitches is that when you use a French knot, you are wrapping your thread or your floss around the needle. Um, and it's really easy to get a bit of slack in it and have kind of a floating knot that can be pulled through from the back of your th uh, fabric. So keep an eye on that. And just for reference, so our French knots are these little guys right here. So they're individual knots that go through the back of the fabric. And if we go back to my other piece that I showed you, there's them as well. So there's the nice little French knots. They're fun to put into the middle of a flower if you finish up a flower or something like that. So to get started on a French knot, you want to, as I've done, you can draw a couple dots on the fabric that you're working on or just work wherever you want to. Uh, it doesn't matter. So you go in from the back on one of the dots and so as I said this is the trickiest one and I'm actually going to move my work up a little bit using my trusty um, pot improvised embroidery hoop so you're going to need both of your hands for this and I can show it right-handed first so what you want to do is you hold your needle in your right hand and with your left hand you want to wrap the thread around it. So you want to make sure that you're wrapping all three strands or if you're using two or six make sure that you're wrapping all three strands or all six strands or all two strands and you wrap from the back of the needle where your fingers are to the front where the tip is. So from here we're going to go one. So that's one wrap so it goes around the needle once and then two. You can do a two wrap French knot or you can do a three one. We're just going to start with two. Now this is the trickiest part is you don't want to lose these wraps off your needle and what you do is you can hold it with your pinky or not your pinky, your index finger um, and what you want to do is while you're holding those stitches on your needle, you put your needle back into the fabric where it came out from. So here you can see. And then carefully pull those wrap stitches down to the end as you push your needle through. And make sure that when you're pushing it through that you're pushing it through beside that initial knot on the end of your thread because otherwise it's going to be very hard to push through and you're still holding where the wrap stitches are so holding that 
um, floss nice and taut so it doesn't escape from you and from here what you do is you pull through and you want to make sure that your knot that you've just created doesn't move so you pull through very very slowly you just keep pulling nice and slowly nice and slowly nice and slowly like that so you're left with a little little knot So I'm going to try this one more time right-handed, then I'll show you left-handed, which is a little bit faster for me. Okay, so I pull my needle, and be careful that when you're moving to your next one, you're not, again, pulling this so tight that it's kind of unbearably unmanageable. Okay, so once more, you take your needle and your right fingers, so your thumb and pointer finger, you wrap once, twice, hold the thread on your needle with your pointer finger and then poke your needle back to where it was. If your stitches get loose a little bit right now that's fine. You can just pull them down with that thread and then what you want to do is push your needle through Keep holding that thread so it's nice and taut. Not too tight though. And then, oops. There we go. So you pull your needle through. Pull it, pull it. My thread's getting a little bit wrapped. That's okay. I'm just going to pull it out of the way. So you just keep pulling, pulling carefully. If you jostle that knot a lot, because it's knotting, you might end up with, again, a floaty knot, and I can show you what happens in that case. So I'm just being very careful to untangle my thread, nicely and patiently doing that. And there we go. So you keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling, almost there. Okay, so there's another one. So if you look on the back, it's just, there's no lumps anywhere, there's nothing like that, so it's nice and easy. So this one I'm going to do with my left hand, and hopefully it doesn't look quite so awkward as I do with my right. So again, so I would hold the needle in my left hand, with my right hand, I wrap around the needle, oops, and if you lose it like that, that's okay. So I pull it nice and taut, because my needle's already poked through right on this side so I hold my thumb there and I'm gonna pull 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 through nice and easy there's that one and if you remember I just said you can do either two winds or three so if you do the three so we wrap and then wrap, and then wrap a third time. You pull that nice and tight. Poke your needle back into where it came out. When you do the three, oop, it's a little bit harder, oops, there we go, to pull through. Just because you're pulling through more pieces of yarn, or more strands of the floss, but you do get a slightly bigger um, French knot. So what happens, you may ask, if you let go? So if you're going through and you don't actually hold your thread nice and steady, it will give you that loop like that. And when you've done that, you can get rid of some of it by pulling on this back string right here, but it's really hard to do anything to fix that stitch. So that is something to watch out for when you are practicing your French knots. So always be careful when you pull through, you do your two wraps, you have your needle back into that hole, 
So poked back in that hole before you pull it tight like that. So you hold it nice and steady. You pull through, pull, 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 pull. If you're concerned about losing that knot or losing the, how nice and firm and stable it is, you put your thumb over it and then you pull, 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 pull. There you go. Okay, and then once you have the beginnings of your um, French knots, you can, if this was in white on black fabric, you would sort of be able to make a dandelion if you added a lot more pieces. Oops. Or if you wanted to do the center of a flower, you could do that. I would highly encourage you to try writing something out and using some small back stitches, stitch over top of the word that you use. And this is what it would look like if you wanted to make a flower or something. Oops, covered up that guy right there. So if you added some more French knots up here, that would look nice. If you wanted to add some green in, you're welcome to switch your um, threads as much as you want. And then when you want to finish, um, you just go in a little bit on the second round. I always like leaving a loop and that's easier to tie a knot with. If you want to just tie a knot on the one strand, that's also fine. Oops, you can even see a mistake I made back here. That's okay. Everybody makes mistakes and I'm always still learning. It does make it a little bit chunky in the back, but that's alright. And that's how that would look. So you can just cut off your end pieces there. I always leave a big chunk until I know I'm going to be definitely finished with it. So I've got all those strands. I will eventually cut them down so they're, you know, around there. Usually I wouldn't do that yet, though. So that was the running stitch, the back stitch, which you can also see over here in purple. So running stitch, back stitch, the French knot, and then we did our satin stitch. So to show you again on here, there's the back stitch outlining the letter, there's the satin stitch, and then over here is the French knot. So next week what I would like to cover is how to create the circular rows. And that's actually using weaving and not a lot of stitching. And then these leaves that I've done here. So you kind of just follow a pattern and that'll be okay. Or and that'll work out. And then the other stitch I would like to show you is it's the green thread here. That one is called a feather stitch. And as you can see, it's great for combining with the French knots to give something a nice little border. So if you have a pair of overalls or if you have a shirt and you're thinking to yourself, oh, I could decorate that. There you go. Um, so that's what we've done for today. Next week we'll also be at 3.30 on Thursday, unless anything happens. Uh, I will be back here again. And if you want to show anything that you've created during the week, you're more than welcome to comment on this video here. I am hoping to upload it to YouTube later. And we will start doing that so we can get more patrons who aren't Facebook users um, involved in the CATS program. If you have any suggestions or um, would like me to teach anything else, I will be happy to see what I can do. Have a good day and goodbye.